<laughs> It'll be all right, Tim. It's all right. We'll figure this out. <laughs> you saying I shouldn't do it? Don't like, do it. Don't do it. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll make it work. You're just mad because if I did this, it would not solve the problem for you guys. It just makes it worse, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's it for me. Yeah, that's the, right. It makes it easier for you. There's still pickup <laughs> lines that haven't been written. Aren't there? <laughs> yeah. I really am trying everything to make sure the game comes out this year. December, what are we in, October? November, December. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. I gotta finish, I'm so close to being done with the dialogue for the game, which will be a huge milestone in my life because all I can think about is the dialogue in this game. There's a lot of dialogue in this game. Okay, we're gonna start. Weeklies, here we are, back on the project. Hey, guess what, I finished all the dialogue for the game. It's awesome, yay! yay. yay. <sighs> that's a relief, Finally. yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't have to put it that way, but yeah, yeah, finally. Someone had to say it. Um, <laughs> I know I was going to my calendar today, and there's a big recurring appointment for Red's writing, and I went and I deleted it. It's yeah. like, oh my God, this is exciting. I'm never going to write again. Never write again. Never write again. So actually, I'm playing through the game right now, and I'm making notes of what dialogue I need to write. <clears throat> Other than that, I'm totally done. <clears throat> And then Tim nobly finished the last of the dialogue and everyone was happy forever. The end. And that's the end of that chapter. Is everybody, any questions? Broken age, broken age. That's our <laughs> browsing chant. Broken age. Yeah. Bye. Bye. What's new, man? Um, we have gotten a butt ton of writing from Tim. It's really good writing, and, um, and the performances that we've gotten back are really good, and, and so that kind of puts the pressure on you as an animator that you want to do that writing and those performances justice. Um, so that's, that's pressure, but good pressure. It feels like things are moving smoothly. It feels that way. We were like finishing in, in record, and we we're actually ahead of schedule in a lot of ways, which like, you know, is, is pretty rare for, for us because usually we're pretty slammed. Uh, yes, I can show you some mock-ups that we're working on in Vela. Yeah, yeah. This scene here is, is where Vela starts. It's players have already seen this, um, you know, the split screen at the very end of the game. And this is kind of what that scene continues as. And then um, this is the first puzzle. You can see here's her scale here. So this is a, a fairly elaborate puzzle. Um, that the player has to hit, and so a lot of this is just uh, breakdowns of how it all works. So we have the um, the hex pals are returning, of course. I love the hex pals, so I'm hoping to do more with them this time. I think the hex pals and the spoon, that stuff was all the, the big hits, like the surprise, like everyone loved these little side characters. So. We have now heard a lot more feedback on that first act than you ever would if you were just gonna release it at once because it's been out in the wild and people have lived with it for a while, we've lived with it for a while, so we, we have more perspective on it. Maybe that means the choices we're making for act two are just a little bit better informed than they would have been if it was just you know one big push. And then just a lot of scenes in act two, I can walk you around some of those if you wanna see. Um, I can show you some of the spaceship stuff. So we've tried to go through and um, make it look like you're driving by the countryside and damage some of the rooms. Exciting, we're really going places. Is it if you go in the doorway on the left, there's some ambience there you did too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's too bad we have puzzles in both those places. It'd be funny to see a room that was there before and uh -huh. then it just isn't there. Like, so the door is open, like to the avalanche area. No, we need that one. Or to oh. the, like the friendship circle or something just opens and then it just like, <laughs> just space in there. Oh, we could, yeah. It just it could just be you open it and it's just the shards of a room and there's just a bunch of. Yarn pals hanging on. Ah, they're just stuck out there. I was thinking for any of the rooms like that, that we should have the doors in a continual animation state where they can't quite close or open. They're mm -hmm. just kind of. Um, oh, oh. They're closing over a severed human foot. There's some cool gameplay that's like non standard stuff um, where like you're floating in zero gravity. And so we like we play around with the physics of that. So this is one of those instances where we were in a brainstorm meeting and we're like, what if? 
the whole ship just like rotated because it's taking off, right? And everyone was like, oh shit. Once you, once you solve that and you get up here and the doors open, that's when we do the and then we cut to the old scene and now you're floating above it. You're like, how do I get down there? So she could be spinning, so there could be a timing thing that you have to do a certain thing when she's aimed in a certain direction. You know, we could have like the boys' magnetic boots stuck on the hole, hmm. you know, if we wanted to use those somehow. And you just like want to drift over to it and grab it and like use it to like, Argh. oh wait, there's a, there's a scarf on the suit. Ah, uh, yes. So okay. she could take the scarf off the floating suit. There you go. Not exactly your typical adventure game walk to A to B. Um, ah, crap, I missed it. It's a timing puzzle. You have to like line up the rotations of these two things. Damn it, I missed it again. <laughs> I anticipate a lot of amazing playtesting feedback from this, with people being like, fuck that minigame. We've also had to think outside the box in terms of like, especially because um, we're reusing environments, so we can't just make a new environment that supports mm -hmm. really difficult puzzles. We have to use um, the environments we already made. And so yeah, we consciously wanted to try and try and do things that we hadn't done before. Let's have a puzzle that goes across multiple scenes. Let's like rotate the ship. Let's play with the fact that we're on a spaceship. We're in space, maybe there's no gravity. There's this really weird plot device that we had in act one where like the mom could magically manipulate everything on the ship. What if Vela could gain access to that system? Like mm -hmm. that's a really cool idea to pursue and like a lot of really um, great puzzle ideas came out of that kind of, that kind of thinking. It's just like ways to interact with the ship um, and to, or to see the same space in a completely original context. And the team is starting to wire out the first few puzzles for Vela on the spaceship now. That's mostly what was going on on Reds. Unless I forgot something. Anyone on the team do anything else? Okay, now I have to come to the bad, uh, not fun part of the meeting where I have some bad news to tell you about. Someone else leaving the company, which is never very fun. Uh, Issa is leaving and... Uh, <laughs> Oh man, come on up here, Asa. So, but I just want to let you know, I'll be cheering uh, Double Fine on, and I've loved my time here. It's great having you. Thank you. Thanks, Asa. Right. Uh, luckily, we have Matt Hansen, who was our right hand man, and he's stepping right into the role of being uh, the VP of product development. So, He's doing that job, which means he probably has less time to do producer type stuff on Broken Age. Yeah, we might can te technically be short a producer. I hadn't thought about that. Now I'm terrified. I'm never going to make December. We'll see. That'll delay them in making that schedule that says we can't make December. So that way I can hopefully get the game done before anyone realizes it's impossible. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to make December. <laughs> we'll never make December. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Oh, really hurts. Oh. Yay! Are you guys still thinking December? Or... That's like above my pay grade, dude. <laughs> like, what do I think? Yeah. Just for me or for the whole game? Oh, for the whole game, I guess. <laughs> Lady and I think it's going to be March. I'm not sure who thought ever December was really going to be it, but... Two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually know the release date at this point. I think it's going to be largely driven by how long it takes um, for all of the animations to be final. Mm -hmm. Because the animators are going to be slammed pretty hard since some of the voice is getting, um, is getting into the game so late, unfortunately. Yeah, some of the VO talent has been harder to get in the studio than others. And so you have a couple of big characters that are yet to be um, recorded. And that holds up all the cutscenes. We're looking at cutscene layouts together so that Ray can know whether they're ready to go to. Um, what's a layout, Ray? So, layout is, is a first pass of the scene with the characters all in their like, sort of place and with the dialogue timed out. The rough cameras, the yeah, timing. Yeah. yeah, and the cameras but are. None of the animation. Yeah, none of the animation. Whipped cream hill fell. <coughs> She, got, she gets it too. <laughs> Who did that one? Miyuki. Is it the same? Um, it's the exact same rig, yeah. Same rig. I think it's funny that it's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just repeating the same joke. You should have a whole different. But the jokes. I can't even think about what. I, I think the joke's funny because it is the same. Mm -hmm. 
If you want something different, no, we could do something good. different. And then um, we're just finish up, finishing up on the alpha on the uh, G2 act. And then we got to do the finale. The whole area, new characters. Um, it's probably a lot of cutscene work. It's probably a ton of animation. When it's not really a 3D world and you have to stage things specifically and you don't want to paint a million scenes, a lot of it really comes down to exactly what the, is going on in the writing and the puzzles. Like, even though we haven't been storyboarding a lot in the process, like, this would be an important one to do because I know Peter's already talking about musical score and <clears throat> that, that London, I mean, that Melbourne Symphony Orchestra gig is going to come up. And I think this would be a great place to have special music and not use existing cues and stuff. So I'm hoping we could actually storyboard it, time it out in an animatic and, and kind of commit to that, lock to that, and then have him build a score to that while we're making it. Do you want to go shot by shot then? Okay, so that's, that's the opening shot, just like here's the situation, it's happened. And then we cut into an interior shot, and I was saying interior because I was hoping we'd just fake it and it's just a bunch of red smoke. Because like it, they're in the room that's the hottest, so it's just like smoke's coming up. Okay. So yeah, so this is the this is the animatic with Lee's uh, storyboards. Just very actiony, um, very dramatic. It'll, it'll require some really good perf performance from uh, from whoever ends up animating it to really just sit down and have a big juicy acting scene. For me, that's that's I get the most enjoyment out of that because that's that's when your personality can come out in a, in a way. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, it should be. Finale should always be a lot of work yeah. because it's three and a half minutes. So that might not sound like a lot, but that's actually that's a really long scene. It's a really long scene because if we're really locking the timing down, which is kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm not sure why we have to have the music scored before we get the dialogue. Unless the deadlines are such that I we think the music scores because they're going to be scoring Grimm at the same time, right? Isn't that what this whole idea is? Oh, is it? I, I think that's know. what the deal is because they because they they only want to book the orchestra once. Oh. And. How's it going? It's going Good. all right. Are you talking about finale? Yeah. Aren't, isn't the idea they're going to book the orchestra once and they're going to do Grimm and this at the same time? Yeah. We were talking about whether we could take it to the next level or not, which would be a Maya animatic. We certainly can, but there's like a, a ridiculous amount of work right now for all this other stuff, and so it's just a matter of where we're putting, because I can't, I have to storyboard, I can't really describe all this to Bagel and then have him storyboard it remotely, <laughs> so I have to storyboard it. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it can be done, it's just, I think uh, it just gets down to the conversation we always sort of have and don't have an answer for, which is um, date. date. Uh, yeah, no, I know, and uh, the conversation needs to happen soon. I keep hitting Tim and Justin and Matt on all of it, uh, yeah. so they know. And it's just like the directive is just like, okay, let's just not worry about it. Just keep going as fast as you can. It doesn't seem like this should take priority over keeping people fed, unlocked for sure. Well, well, it's it's the only thing with a hard deadline. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. We're just talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I've been working with Vic on the uh, all the timeline stuff too. So. Um, yeah, I think we're, we're trying to put together like a whole new pass on it, and we've talked with most of the leads and everything already about stuff, so um, probably within the next week or so we'll have a, ooh, bless you, uh, probably the next week or so we'll have a new uh, full timeline to, to share. I think it's pretty safe to say at this point already that it's not December. Um, I think we've already talked about that with pretty much everybody, but... Um, not with me. Yeah, we've talked about it <laughs> multiple times. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they ambushed me with that December thing. Well, they've all been talking about how we're, they don't feel like we're gonna make December, and we probably aren't, but I haven't seen any data. You know, it's like, it's all hunches. It's all people's hunches versus hunches, but I have, we're supposed to, they're supposed to be doing a waterfall schedule, which is like all the dependencies um, linked out, and that will show us ending a certain month, and hopefully it's not April. But it's almost like, if you believe it's going to be March, then it will be, be March. If you're trying to hit December, it'll be hopefully January. But if everyone's just like, we're not even trying to make December, then it will slip even worse. So um, it's, it's hard to kind of keep it a sense of urgency on the project when you feel like, you know, because we're spending our own money on it now. So it's not like a publisher milestone, where it's like, well, the milestones due on in December and everyone just 
always takes that seriously. And when you have something that's an internal milestone or a milestone that only Double Fine is uh, holding you accountable for, people are like, well, we've got an extra week and stuff. And that's a hard, hard thing to, um, to instill that sense of like taking a milestone seriously, even when it's just us. Because it, it's just, it's more money. Every week that it goes, it costs, costs more money. And it's longer that the backers have to wait. And it's, you know, the longer that we have to put off other things we want to do. So um, I still push for getting it done as soon as possible. Yeah, just there's a lot of work left. Um, it's probably not going to be December, but we're figuring out when it would be. It looks like the thing we're thinking, we're hoping for December is, uh, you know, we got two more weeks on Act 2 stuff. Um, and then the finale stuff we're thinking is like, six um, for like a really solid safe alpha and with all the like holiday stuff in before the end of the year and everything that kind of takes us almost exactly to the end of the year then yeah the matter of closing it out is what we're trying to figure out now so okay i could have told you like i did back in july it wasn't gonna happen for december so yeah bring your shoes i'm gonna wait till i see all the numbers and now it's at, uh, well, we're really close to when it should be wrapping up if it's going to be done in December. You know, we should have the voice in, and we don't have the final three characters in. We're doing that next week. Uh, on Reds, I'm going down to help with the VO recording, which is happening Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, this week. Um, that's for Vela. I don't feel confident about that. Okay. Yeah, I'm quite honest. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable saying what I really think because I don't want to say it on camera. I'll just be totally blunt. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and I'll try to get us out of the studio time that we've purchased for the next four days. Um, I'm working on it. So Tim flew down to record uh, dialogue, um, Vela in particular, and um, she had a family emergency. Um, and so that kind of messes everything up. <laughs> I mean, it's not her fault. People have family emergencies. Um, but it definitely uh, kind of went into panic mode a little bit. Do you see I'm in Tiny gun to shoot myself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the press up on camera. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wait. That's better. <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all right, Tim. It's all right. We'll figure this out. How far does this push out the show? Vela, for her part of Act Two, is in almost every cutscene. So there's very few cutscenes that she's actually not in. And if Melena has this up to date as of today, everything that's read hasn't been recorded yet. And you can guess who this might be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Vela. This is why we were kind of freaking out. That's part of the reason why I made that document, just to figure out, okay, what can we do? What can we sort of do and maybe have to reanimate a little bit later? And what's just, we just have to have the voice, otherwise it's just gonna be tough. So we're, anyway, we're gonna animate to some scratch. We're gonna not animate some scenes with Vela. It's gonna be a mixture of things. We're gonna be juggling a little bit. And then hopefully the first week of December, uh, that's what we've been promised. This first week of December, we'll get um, the recordings done for Vela. Which is really frustrating because we were so late with that dialogue that um, make, keep being even later was not something we wanted to do. Waiting for her, at a certain point, it really, really hurts us. Um, and I feel like we're already beyond, like way beyond where we should be for her recording. We'd have to kind of maybe push everybody off of the project onto some other projects because we, you don't want to be sitting around burning through money, right? We have to be working on something all the time. I mean, it all rides on that December, right? It rides on the recording actually happening in December. Um, and so if she's not available, I think we need to have a second actor cast who is also on hold for the same days that we're putting Mastasa on hold. Uh, when she returns, and if Misasa is unavailable, then we have to go into the studio with that backup person. A lot of people on the team are saying we should recast. We should recast Bella with an actress that we know we can get and we'll be ready. I'd be fine with it, but now it just bugs me to think of Bella having two voices, because there's, there's no such thing as a real sound alike. Like, it can sound kind of like it, but I think um, Misasa has a really unique voice, and I think players would just no, they would play the first act 
and then the second act would have a different actress, and it would be that way forever. It would always be that way. It sucks, but I don't want an actor to be responsible for causing so much chaos to our schedule. So changing Bella just, just feels horrible to me. So I'm, I'm fighting for keeping the original actress, and I'm hoping she will come through for me. I'm going down to L.A. again to see if the magical the gopher will come out of its hole and, and record some dialogue. <laughs> We don't know what's gonna happen, but I just go down and we see if she shows up. And Tim is reporting right now. Has anyone heard? Has he sent an email? She, well, we like, know she showed up. She did, okay. Yeah. She's there. She showed up. She's there. That's okay. the first step. Well, that's a good step. Dad, <laughs> back to the booze. Unless cool. <laughs> really big explosion. I like it when she schemes. 29. Hey, President Ugly. Is that a dig or is that actually his name? <laughs> <laughs> it's totally a dig. Okay. You're like, you're pretty casual about it. Like, okay. hey, what's up, Ugly? Everybody thanks like, you. Oh, I feel like it's so uncivil. Mm -hmm. and Yeah, so this meeting is to talk about the schedule for finishing the rest of Act 2. Um, so I've met with, uh, with Vic and Melina and Greg to talk through the remaining work and, and put it all on a timeline to see when the thing's finishing. This should be fairly accurate because you've updated this just recently, right? This is every, every discussion we've had, every wonderful um, change to our plans that's come up. It's all on there. So. I thought it was going to be April, so this is actually good news. It's April to release the game because it takes three weeks to manufacture. But this is when development will be done, which manufacture. is... Manufacture? Yep, so we're, we're going to do physical discs. Oh, that's right. Simul it has to be simultaneous now, right? That's part of the deal. So we did a, game, we did a deal with Nordic, which is yet to be released, but it's, uh, it's cool. So our deal with Nordic is that um, they're going to handle retail distribution of the game um, in Europe, but also here. So they have some relationships... Uh, with retailers like like Best Buy and, and other really huge big box stores, um, it'll be really exciting to see Broken Age show up there. Uh, the way it's actually working out is once we're done with the PC version, uh, we can ship it over to them. They have a very quick, just a few week turnaround, um, which is exciting. And during that time, we're working on the other platforms to get them ready. So like, you know, when you bought it, whoever's bought it on whatever platform, the hope is everybody can experience the conclusion together. So that's the goal. We'll see how close we get. So as you can see, this takes us uh, basically to the end of the year to get the game to alpha. Um, and then we would transition on to beta work when we return from the holidays. Mm -hmm. And then we have six weeks of bug fixing and polish work at the end. This is traditionally how long we've needed for all of our projects. Um, there might be some, some room to pull that in, but I. I do think that the game needs that much time in order to address all of the play test feedback, bug fixing, and polish work. Has this, have you gone over this, any of this with Justin? Yet? Only the end date. What kind of face did he make when you talked about the end date? <laughs> it was, did he smile? No. Good. It's somewhere right. between constipation and DEF CON 4. <laughs> yep. He also only smiles when things are really bad, so. <laughs> 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 it was not a happy face, I'll say that. I mean, that's the thing, because the information I'm just wondering is what, you know, financially, can we go to this date, or can't we? You know, because before we were talking about December, and he was kind of like, we, you know, we can't go beyond that because of uh, financial reasons, and so that's what I would like to hear from him is what happens if we go to this date. Yeah. All right. Sure. Anything else? Tim, do you have anything else? Okay, some inspiring words of uh, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, hey, Nick, what's the real schedule? Yeah. Hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> I'm getting a strong sense people are trying to give me a message that it 
it's a risk to hit December. It's going to be tight to make December. I mean, that's just me reading between the lines of that meeting. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be over soon, one way or the other. You getting this? This is good shit. Mm -hmm.